I am analyzing the course and patterns of the races. It is fascinating. Given the unpredictable nature of this course, I cannot determine who the victor will be. A friendly reminder to all our spectators, be mindful of blaster fire. Safatomo Speedway is not liable for any injury, death, or disintegration. Thank you. Looks like you're done to me. One last race. If you win, we pay you double. I have no record of that system. Because the best treasures usually aren't found on maps. What exactly is the heart of the mountain? A rare crystalline stone. Some say it's the key to an ancient power. These etchings are easily a thousand years old. Older. Much older. Relax. There's always a way out. We just have to find it. It's part of the puzzle. It's a pattern. We need to align the symbols in the right order. order. I sense a plot to destroy the Jedi. Hello there. The highest levels are involved in the conspiracy. Nancy Pelosi is Emperor Palpatine. Palpatine. We must be the great arsenal of democracy. 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 I love democracy. Democracy. Fear, fear, fear. We'll keep the local systems in line, line. Truths we cling to depend greatly on our own point of view, point of view. Welcome to the Conspiracy in the Force podcast. Star Wars, conspiracies, and more. With your host, me, Conspiracy Kyle. Kyle. Rebellions are built on hope, hope. For God commanded the light to shine out of darkness, darkness, darkness. As long as there's light, light. This is what Luke says before he goes to the toilet. This is Red 5. I'm going in. Good morning. Sunday morning. Welcome back to another episode of Conspiracy in the Force. I'm your host, Conspiracy Kyle. Sorry for the delay on the Bad Batch recap shows. I felt that the latest two episodes didn't have enough meat on their bones to discuss individually. But this episode will combine story elements, conspiracies, and biblical parallels and truths from both episodes together. 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 Quick side note before we get started. I've been scaling back my social media activity a little bit. It's becoming a distraction from other things in my life, so I'll be on there very sporadically for the time being. However, if you do want to connect with me on there and see what I'm up to, I'm at ConspiracyKyle at Twitter and Instagram. In another quick note, you may have noticed that I've been bringing in more biblical context to my podcast recently. I understand that not everyone is a Christian like myself, but I felt God's urging upon me to speak out more and more about my faith in His words. So I understand if this is off-putting to you if you don't believe in Christ and you don't want to hear these kind of things. But just so you know, I'm going to be speaking more and more about this as time goes on. I've been devoting myself to Bible study each and every day, not because I think I'm such a good person, but because I'm a deeply flawed person who wants to gain knowledge and insight on how to walk closer to God and to share His Word with others. Thank you for those of you who have stuck with this podcast, given my added focus on the things of above, because the things of above are the things that will remain when all the earth, which includes Star Wars and conspiracy theories, will pass away in the end. So God bless. Now let's get into the episode. Episode 4 of The Bad Batch Season 2, titled Faster, was a fairly straightforward episode about Wrecker, Omega, and Tech accompanying Sid on a mission to earn more money in a sport called Riot Racing. Now, nothing jumped out to me of major quote-worthy importance on the first watch of this episode, but on second viewing, I found some interesting nuggets for discussion. Not to be confused with the nerf nuggets that the other Bad Batch members were off retrieving in this episode. 
For one thing, this episode involves going double or nothing in a dangerous race. Now, for those not familiar with that term, it basically means that you lose a match for money, and instead of paying up, you rematch for double the money. This strategy, of course, works out for the bad batch. But in reality, it's bad news. Bad news. Bad news. I used to play a lot of video poker at casinos, and there was always an option to double up whenever you had a winning hand. You then had to select one of five face-down cards to attempt to beat one card face-up that the computer had drawn. As you would imagine, the odds are always stacked against you, and it's very difficult to win. And when you do lose, you lose that hand that you would have otherwise won. The casinos know all about greed and profit from it. To quote the Apostle Paul in 1 Timothy 6 verse 10, For the love of money is the root of all evil. evil. So back to the episode. So the sport involved in this episode is called Riot Racing, a no-holds-barred pod race-like event where drivers use any means necessary like heavy weapons to destroy their opponents and win the race. Think Mario Kart in space. Even the spectators are not immune to danger, as one spectator is killed by a random blaster bolt in the middle of a race. The stadium announcer is quick to note that the arena is not liable for any injuries suffered, much like the COVID vaccine manufacturers, or any vaccine manufacturer for that matter. Later in the episode, when the gangster threatening the crew accepts their offer of the double or nothing, a second COVID vaccine parallel slips out. I never stop a fool from giving his life to make me rich. A few other things from this episode. There are two instances of the Bad Batch choosing to use restraint and to hold off on violence when situations arose that it could have been used in. The first situation involved the gangster who they were competing against. You know, instead of repairing him, we should be taking out that gangster. We cannot apply our military tactics to this situation. Malegi is dangerous and connected. Even if we extract Sid and escape, they will seek retribution. In the second clip was when Tech was racing and chose a bold strategy. It would be wise to divert power to the reflector shields from your primary weapons. Well, what's he doing? Now, in both situations, force could have been used, but it wasn't. For me, it harkens back to the Bible passage after Jesus was arrested. One of the disciples reached out with a sword to fight the mob and sliced off someone's ear. To which Jesus replied in Matthew 26, verse 52, All they that take the sword shall perish by the sword. During these two seasons of The Bad Batch, we have seen The Bad Batch use several different methods of non-lethal combat, including using stun blasts on their enemies. It's amazing to see in our world that many of those advocating for gun ownership, which to be clear I'm 100% for, they seem to have a bloodthirsty nature when it comes to their use of guns. I've heard it many times where conservative Christians are almost excited about the opportunity to gun down a criminal that enters their house. Now would they be justified in doing so? Yes, of course. But to be anxiously waiting to do it can make you no better than a mere murderer, and definitely not someone who's actively following the teachings of the Bible. 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 Finally in this episode, Tech is analyzing the course and watching to determine who he thinks will be the winner. However, he deems that the racing environment is too unpredictable to determine who the victor will be. be. Luckily in this world, for those of us who are Christians, we know that regardless of how the chaos of the current day manifests and changes over time, we know that God wins in the end. Now, yes, I know that's one of those catchphrases Q used to love posting, God wins, it's going to be biblical, etc. But it's really true. In Revelation 22, verse 13, it states of God that he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And the last. Now on to episode number five, titled Entombed.
Now, this episode gave off some very obvious Indiana Jones vibes, with the hidden chambers, ancient mysteries, and buried treasure. The main theme of this episode was about gathering up an ancient artifact called the Heart of the Mountain from an ancient world that predated many of the modern civilizations in the galaxy. The galaxy. The galaxy. The galaxy. However, as this episode unfolded, you found out that by obtaining this treasure, it caused more harm than good, and it caused chaotic activity that sought to destroy the entire planet. Now, for this episode, let's just talk big picture instead of individual quotes. The main thing I took overall is that some things are better left alone. I know everyone who's in conspiracies loves digging into info about ancient mysteries, aliens, pyramids, hidden history, mythical symbolism, and the like, which are all very interesting things. But in the grand scheme, it can often be a fruitless effort to go down too many rabbit holes. And it can do more harm than good if it takes away from living your life with your family and trusting in God. Hence, this is why I'm scaling back my social media activity. We will never know all the mysteries of the universe we live in and the planet that we live on. No matter how many documentaries we watch or how many books we read, we will never be able to fully grasp the wonder and mystery of God's creation. And that's intentional. Think back to the story of the Tower of Babel in the Bible. They wanted to build a tower to heaven to be like God, and it completely backfired on them. For me, I trust in God, I have faith in Christ, and I'm reading the Bible. Conspiracies and all these other things are very important to look at and to understand, but for me, that's what I'm focused on. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Conspiracy in the Force. I'll be back next week with a new episode, either on the Bad Batch or on another topic, which I haven't given much thought to as of yet. May the real force, which is God, be with you.